top 10 best educational videos on hybrid photography are now available in DVD form on hybridhouse.pro. Hey folks, on our LinkedIn group, that is Hybrid Photography Using Mirrorless Cameras, you'll find on LinkedIn, we've got a wonderful, healthy group of 2,500 or so photographers making that change from using DSLRs into using mirrorless cameras. And the reason they're using mirrorless cameras, uh, multiple reasons, but most of them are, uh, they're smaller and lighter, easier to take with you, of course, but they also allow us much easier ways to shoot hybrid photography to make e-products and hybrid photography is photo plus video plus audio well, you can combine those files together to make an electronic product as a primary way to make either a part-time or a full-time living well one of the, the newer members of the group is frank denino and he's a terrific fella he's a solid shooter too well, he's got a problem. He went out and he bought a nice Lumix GH4, which is one of the cameras we strongly recommended. Uh, and he's got some good glass, but he's got a problem. He says, hey, Will, he's on the web, web form. And you can hop on to the LinkedIn group and you can see this discussion live. He says, hey, uh, uh, I'm seeing some noise problems here. And I go, oh, wow. Okay. I said, hold on. Usually noise problems associated with mirrorless cameras, the pro mirrorless cameras, all the ones we recommend, is usually a subjective thing or it may be something else. So hang on a second. First of all, let's diagnose the problem, right? Then let's figure out how we're going to fix it, right? Let's do that. Now, first is I ask Frank, I go, okay, buddy. Um, you have to send me a JPEG that you see the noise in straight out of the camera. No raw, right? Because how do you know if you take a raw file from your camera and you process it, how do you know if the noise isn't coming from the raw file processor, particularly from an unusual camera like the GH4, right? Most raw processors are made for Canons and Nikons and DSLRs. Well, and all of a sudden you've got a super fabulous high performance, you know, Ferrari grade mirrorless camera, the GH4, which is the best of the best. And now you're saying you got noise problems. And I go, wow, what were you shooting? He goes, family portraits outdoors. I go, nope, nope, nope. Now you're in my territory. <laughs> So that's that's what I do. Right? I'm a commercial shooter and I do commercial portraits as well as some family portrait works. So let's take a look. And Frank, thank you for allowing me to make this video here for you and to make it public because we're going to get to the bottom of your problem. First thing is on the screen, you're going to see a folder from Frank. And then you're going to see one of my images that I put in here. So let's take a look at Frank's image. And when we put it into Photoshop, we notice, first of all, uh, looks like, you're, of course, your white balance is off a little bit. Let's not worry about that. But um, and, uh, we want to see what Frank's talking about when he talks about noise. Well, let's say this family orders a 16 by 20 of this print. That's yeah, a big deal. Hang on, Frank. First thing I'm noticing is, you know, this file size is awful small down here. See that? It says document when it's opened is 24.7 megabytes. That's my first clue. That means that you are not set to the large file size on your GH4. Next, let's find out what you're talking about with noise. Because when we zoom in, I don't notice any noise. Uh-oh, hold on a second. Wow. Yeah. That's not noise, buddy. That is there. We're at pixel level there. So let's, let's pop out one. Okay. We don't want to be at pixel level. So we're going to zoom out one more. That is lack of resolution. That is using a small sensor and only using a little bit of that sensor, right? Let's zoom back out. Let's go and take a look at this full frame, right? Here's that full frame shot, but the head size is taking up maybe what? 3%, 4% of the sensor. This is one of the things that when you deal with a smaller sensor camera, you've just got to overcome. All right, if you would have used a phase one back with a 60 megapixel, this would be fine. True, but you'd be, you know, $60,000 of debt. Anyway, there are ways around this, buddy. Here's the first thing. If you were to have shot this using all of the pixer, the pixels in your sensor, right? Looks like here you have this set to medium file size. So that means you've got that nice, beautiful sensor that Panasonic gave you that's this big. You've now cut it down to using only this many pixels spread across that pixel site size that's this big. 
So that's what unfortunately is going to give you this. Let me show you the difference. Here is just a random water ski shot that I shot last weekend at a water ski competition. And you're going to notice I also shot it with a GH4. But look at the first thing that I see. Uh, I see that now when I open up this JPEG, it's 34.2 megabytes. That's a lot bigger, right? Now, let's also look on in. We've got some resolution issues when we get to about there, but that's not bad. That's going to be printable, right? We're going to be able to print this to 1114. Actually, we can make a 1620 out of this, and it's going to be just fine. Now, there are some post-production stuff that you can do to save your file, but let's go back and let's look at another kind of interesting piece. Let's get the info on your file. And let's zoom in on that if we can. Sorry about that. Let me move that over here. You're going to see, yep, Frank shot it at medium file size. There you go. He used a GH4, used sRGB. Of course, he should be. Good job for putting your um, uh, data into your every one of your files. That a boy. Keywording, very proud of you, pal. Looks like you imported those into... Lightroom, which is probably good, but that also means that you didn't give me the file straight from the camera. I need the file straight from the camera. There's no way you got these keywords on there straight from the camera. So what you're going to need to do is, uh, first of all, I'm not going to yell at you, <laughs> but when the coach says I need a JPEG straight from the camera, that means right off the card brother right just like this image right here here's what they'll look like let's go well actually this one won't because this one came through lightroom too this one is labeled water ski whatever it is right but take a look at the difference in the file size wow 4600 pixels by 2500 pixels right and when we go back to yours you'll notice that you used only 3600 by 2400 pixels so if you would have shot that in large file size you would have probably not had any sort of issues so don't confuse low resolution with noise because it's not can you fix that yes you can but you'll need to get expert opinion from somebody much brighter than myself uh, this is a job for Suzette Allen she can tell you exactly how to do that although one thing I don't agree with Suzette's workflow is uh, well she shoots a lot of raw which I'm not a big fan of but when she shoots even her still photo files on her GH4, she turns the noise reduction way down. She thinks that the external processors in the tools that she uses, like uh, Adobe tools, does a better job of noise, noise suppression than than our cameras do. I just disagree, right? It's not that anybody's right or wrong. It doesn't matter who's right, who's wrong. My style of photography is that I want to get everything I can in the camera. So uh, under the conditions that you shot, those were very easy conditions, right? Super easy lighting. You um, could have done a little more pre-processing to adjust your contrast and your white balance uh, to give you a little bit more info. Also, in a case like this, when you've got small head size, here's your tip from the coach. I know you've been waiting for it. Where's the, where's the tip? The pre-processing, right? That's the concept of setting up your camera with as much data as possible in order to make the best possible picture that doesn't need any post-processing, right? The tip Frank, is I want you to get used to a menu that you're probably not comfortable with yet. And that's the eye resolution. When it senses that you have, when, you, when you're set to face detection autofocus, that triggers the GH3 and the GH4 to do more than just autofocus on faces. Face detection autofocus means it places color balance and exposure and it judges a dynamic range values a little bit off of just that face. Well, it'll also judge, judge resolution off of that face too, brother. So if you, you would have taken your eye resolution menu in your GH4 and kicked it up to, in this case, high, you would have got more detail in that face. So bottom line is, if on that shoot, you're able to use the biggest JPEG, right? Just use the biggest JPEG and never take it off, pal. Don't worry about it, right? Unless you're just shooting webby kind of stuff, just use it full blast all the time. 
on this cloudy day beach shot, I would have set my um, eye dynamic because you know I'm big into eye dynamic. Now, if you if if you're not you're not into eye dynamic yet, that's one of the reasons you bought that camera. Get on the photo channel. Get yourself a subscription there, young man. <laughs> or, by the way, those videos are now available on DVD at hybridhouse.pro. So, sorry to, to plug our educational content. But if I were to set that shot up, it would have been auto white balance, face detect autofocus. Eye dynamic would have been turned to off. I would actually shut it off because that is such a low scene brightness area. I don't need my dynamic range help from my camera. But I would have turned eye resolution to on. I also would have changed my photo style. And instead of using whatever photo style you used, I can't see it on your list here. I would have gone with the natural photo style, believe it or not. Instead of portrait, I use natural for shots like this. And I, t I tend to get the images that I want. So, uh, sorry about the problem with your file. You may have to res it up. You may have to fix some of that stuff. I uh, wish I had more info to tell you, but I'm not a Photoshop expert. So you need a post-processing person that can help you out with that. You know who else is good with that is Marlene Hylema. She may be able to help you. She may be able to help you if you get a chance, okay? All right. Thanks, Frank. You're the best. Bye. The top 10 best educational videos on hybrid photography are now available in DVD form on hybridhouse.pro.